After the last two stages, it's time for a breath of fresh air. I'm probably the only person who would say that for a number of reasons. So this is our token water stage here, but the thing is, Sonic water stages work a little bit differently than most water stages. I mean, first off, we're not swimming. However, the mechanics are different. Uh, Sonic moves a bit slower and his jumps a bit floatier underwater. However, more importantly, we will find these pockets of air scattered about the level. When a big bubble emerges, you want to breathe that in because, you see, we are actually on a time limit. You hear that dinging sound? That means time is passing underwater, and if Sonic spends too long underwater, he will drown, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, this is basically because water is actually Sonic's weakness, and that is actually due to a mistake on the uh, Sonic team's part. In fact, I believe Yuji Naka himself actually believed that hedgehogs couldn't swim, so when de designing the game, they decided that Sonic himself would drown if he spent too long underwater, thus adding a bit of challenge to this water stage, but apparently hedgehogs can float quite well, so they were incorrect about that, but then again, Sonic is a talking blue hedgehog that stands on two legs, and also he runs really fast, so hey, I think one more difference from normal hedgehogs isn't gonna kill anyone. So the stage itself, a lot of people dislike. Uh, partially due to the challenge, and partially just because they dislike the water physics. And honestly, I don't really find the water physics too bad, I mean... Yeah, Sonic definitely moves a bit slower, but honestly, the previous two stages outright stopped you. This stage does that sometimes, and it is annoying when it does it, but overall, you do a lot more, you know, actual walking and platforming in this stage. I mean, you do also have to stop for air bubbles, well... Maybe not have to stop, I think if you're good enough you can get through these sections without needing them most of the time, but, you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that, but yeah, all in all, I don't think these water physics are too bad, especially compared to other games. Some games can just have really bad water stages. Uh, for example, Mega Man Legends 2, which is a 3D game, however, water physics in that game, oh boy, I will agree that those are way too slow and just bog down that game's pacing, but... That's a different matter. Oh, and... oh. Now, here is one of my least favorite parts of the stage. Some of the traps can be annoying depending on how they're used. Uh, the little spinning ball and chains and these stone bear head thingamajigs, they can be a bit annoying. But the orbiter guy, that guy's annoying. I like how they introduce him, that was actually pretty well done, because he's off in a corner and it's pretty hard to get hit by him, but you can still see what he does in a sort of safe and... How did that even happen? In sort of a safe environment. Uh, but if you find him in a more thin hallway, it's pretty tricky to dodge him, especially with these water physics. While I don't mind them too much, they can make that guy really tricky to dodge. And man, I do not like that at all. These are also probably some of the longest stages in the game. But regardless, we're moving on to Act 2. Now, the stage itself I do like, well, I don't mind the water physics too much. I do like more parts of the stage, I mean, the song is definitely very good. This is a nice little tune, and the aesthetic's actually pretty good as well. Uh, it's a ruinous area, sort of, uh, sort of similar to Marble Zone, but, uh, I think this one, you know, conveys ruins a bit better than that zone did. I mean, it's got the little overgrowth thing going, it's got all these blocks, and it's flooded, of course, so... Yeah, I, I just think it looks a lot more interesting than that stage, and it's probably one of the best-looking stages in general. Also, fun fact, uh, speaking of this stage's difficulty, apparently this... Ooh! Before I get to that, this is actually the infamous drowning tune. Take too long, and that countdown timer will start. While it says 5 seconds, it's actually more of a 10-second timer due to the fact that, well, each second takes 2 seconds to count down, so... Nonetheless, though, it definitely it's definitely very intimidating, I gotta say, and the fact that it starts at 5, while it's more of a 10-second countdown, it does make you freak out a little bit. Thankfully, I was near bubble, so it was no problem. Also, another no annoying thing... Yeah, that switch right there. When I said there are a few annoying parts to this stage, it's parts like that where you kind of have to do a switch hunt. Like, that just seems unnecessary, guys. I could just do a platforming segment. I wouldn't mind. 
Anyway, yes, as I was saying, this area was actually supposed to be the second area in the game before they moved it back because, you know, the designers and probably the playtesters found it a little too difficult to be, you know, the second stage in the game. Of course, Marble's own is, you know, still the second stage, so there's that, but, eh, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I don't remember where I heard this, but a while back I remember hearing that originally... Really? Uh, this game's, uh, it was basically supposed to follow a sort of theme in levels, like, it was supposed to start from a natural sort of area and move to more mechanical, city-like areas. Uh, so the first and final levels were the same, but, of course, but if you look at the, uh, level select, it is actually a bit different on there. But yeah, I, again, I don't remember exactly where I heard this, but that would be pretty fitting for this game, given, you know, we're fighting robots that have animals trapped inside them, so, you know, it is a very nature versus technology sort of game. Oop. Thankfully, you can duck over this guy. But yes, Labyrinth Zone is probably one of the more natural-looking areas in the game, even though it is the ruins of a civilization, but, you know, it's overgrown and all that, and even more so than Marble Zone. So I think Marble Zone would have been third. I don't know it exactly the uh, original level order, but I just know that Labyrinth was the second zone. But I believe that's all there is to this stage. Yes, indeed, that's all there is to the stage. Again, this is pretty much one of the uh, longer zones in the game. I mean, a three-minute stage? Man, that was so long. And Act 3. This is the other annoying part in this stage. This isn't too bad, because these enemies are easy, as are the uh, fish enemies. The orbit enemies are the only difficult ones, but yeah, this section is just an infinite looping section, which you need to make just the right jump in order to make it into that area right there. And unfortunately, I didn't make the jump there, but... Yeah, you have to jump like that. It's a very annoying part of this stage. Trust me on that one. And the thing is, they actually reuse something similar to this in uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. There is the stage in Sandopolis, where there's an infinite looping section which is very tricky to find your way out of. You don't have to press a switch, you just have to go to a very specific corner of that area, which is very annoying. And Sandopolis, of course, is another stage that a lot of people dislike, so... Yeah, there, <laughs> there is that. I think another reason that people dislike the stage is just because it's not nearly as good as some of the other Sonic Water stages. I mean, you've got Aquatic Ruin, which is probably everyone's favorite due to the fact that it treats water more as a punishment. There are some very tricky jumps in that stage, but if you complete those jumps and, you know, you don't screw them up, you'll barely touch any water in that stage, if any at all. And it's just, if you fall, you have to go to the water section. It's also a very cool looking section in general, so there's that. Then of course there's Hydrocity Zone, which is just overall very, very fast. Whether you're in or out of the water, it's just a very speedy section, so... That eliminates this stage's criticism of, hey, it moves way too slowly, and... You know, I feel I shouldn't be moving this slowly in a Sonic game, even if I am underwater. Oh, and also there are these spikes here. Uh, be very careful about jumping down because there's a huge row of spikes, and if you remember, there are no invincibility frames if you hit spikes, kind of like Mega Man. Except, you know, it's purely from hitting spikes in general that you don't get uh, invincibility frames, but you do have to press this switch, which can be a little bit tricky, not too bad. Uh. And then, of course, there's the other water stage in the uh, earlier 2D Sonic games, which was uh, Tidal Tempest, I think, from Sonic CD, which I don't really like CD in general, and I don't really like that stage, but it is actually fairly heavily based on Labyrinth Zone here, so I, I don't know why they'd actually do that, to be completely honest. I mean, nobody really likes this stage at all, so... I, I don't know why they reuse this sort of aesthetic, other than the fact that, you know, CD is just made up of bad ideas in general, but nah, I guess that's just me and my personal opinion about not liking Sonic CD. My personal fact about not liking Sonic CD, cough, cough, cough. Yeah. They are very generous with the invincibility and shields here, aren't they? Of course, they aren't very generous with that section, because, uh, 
get hit there, and there's a very good chance you'll be sent back a little ways. It's still annoying because, of course, you've got a limited time underwater, so that kind of feels like a low blow, to be completely honest, and these aren't exactly the easiest obstacles to avoid. But yeah, they are very, very lenient with the uh, shields invinci and invincibility. Probably because they don't actually help you with the main gimmick that is, you know, drowning. This isn't Sonic 3, the shield isn't a bubble shield, which is a shame, because the bubble shield is pretty alright. I mean, it's not as cool as the fire or electric shield, but it did help in hydrosity, so I'll help. Actually, that's probably another reason that people don't mind hydrosity, because as long as you don't get hit and you grab a bubble shield, you will never have to deal with the countdown, so... That is definitely advantageous in that regard, and ooh, yeah, stand as far to the right as possible, otherwise you're gonna get squished. Here we just have one big stairway, so I'm gonna bet we're almost at the end of this stage, right? Of course, what's Robotnik gonna have in store for us this time? What could it possibly be? Well, we've got a shield for it, that's nice. I'm definitely gonna need this, because Robotnik doesn't even have anything this time. He just flies off and hope the water kills you. I mean, I guess fair enough, that's alright. This, this gauntlet can be a bit tricky, but overall it's really not that bad. Basically, just try to take this slowly up until the water catches up with you. Because, honestly, it gets a lot more difficult if you get hit like that. Especially if you get sent back down. You should have plenty of time to get through this area without, you know, the countdown timer starting. See? I got a good head start, and the countdown timer only just started. And I definitely made a few mistakes there, so I could have e done even better. But yes, Robotnik didn't even try this time, he just ran away. And no, you can't kill him. All you can do is just press the capsule and move on to the next stage. Which coincidentally is the best stage.